We understand that there is definitely a change in climate and I've seen it through my lifetime. The snow levels, the rain, last year was quite dry. We haven't seen one of those years in, in at least in my lifetime. This is happening and we have to do something about climate change. When we think about climate change, it's a really daunting challenge. There's obvious things that we need to be thinking about in terms of policy changes around CO2 emissions, but what do we do about wildlife and what do we do now? Because we already see the impacts of climate on our wildlife, on our habitats. As climate changes, animals on the landscape are going to have to have the ability to adjust to changing environmental conditions. When you consider the potential impacts of climate change on wildlife, there's going to be major changes in all the habitat types as we know them. The snow on top of Sandia is gone now. We can't see it anymore from down here in the valley. And the lack of snowpack means that the water levels in the Rio Grande are going to remain low, and that is bad news. So in the 21st century in New Mexico, it's been dry, and we use the word drought to describe it, but really this is kind of a permanent new state of affairs. We have less water, we can expect that going forward. Climate change reduces the available water supply, it increases the evaporation, our snow melts off and evaporates sooner. Climate change is really bad for our water supply. A lot of these systems that wildlife are living in, particularly in some of the arid places like New Mexico, they're already under more stress because of a changing climate. And as we get more water deficits, for example, or we have a change in the amount of droughts or the frequency or the severity of droughts, then wildlife are stressed and are eking out a living in tougher and tougher conditions over time. For us, it's really looking at wildfire, it's looking at drought and even flooding because we know that wildfires are even more exacerbated today than perhaps what they once were. Drought worsens across our state. Action 7 News reporter Justin Matthews shows us why many of you could start noticing a lot more animals in your yards because of it. Golfers spot a two-year-old black bear running through the Desert Greens golf course on Albuquerque's west side this past summer. The drought that has ravaged wetlands and crops throughout Texas and New Mexico is forcing migratory birds to fly off course in search of food and water. I know last year there were a couple incidents in Rio Rancho where bears came down. You know, normally you don't see them at that elevation, but if there's no water, no ability for them to find safe food that they rely on specifically, then they're going to go somewhere to find it. How is climate going to affect them? Are they going to move up higher? Are they going to move down lower? Are they going to rely more on these riparian systems? So how do we protect these riparian systems when they're going to probably be increasingly impacted by a drying climate here in the Southwest? So the ability to move from point A to point B, so it may be moving the range northward, for example, or to a higher elevation over time, will be critically important for a lot of species uh, over time in the face of a changing climate. So when we think about connectivity, we understand that that's a way to allow animals to move. It's a way to protect their natural migrations. But one of the other things that it really is critical for is enabling animals to move and respond to a changing climate and be able to respond to natural needs that are no longer in the place they used to go. One million species of plants and animals face extinction, many within decades. Human activity is responsible for threatening a million species to extinction in the near future. And a big part of that reason is because of habitat fragmentation. We need to make sure that we reduce development in road building and mineral extraction in those very sensitive areas where we know wildlife 
is traveling, where they're migrating, where they're going to need to go to explore new habitats so that they can adapt in the face of uh, these developments and this fragmentation and climate change. Corridors is related to all of that, and it's really important for the viability of our biodiversity. We're sort of in this existential moment. We need to make some decisions as a state and as a region and as a country and as a planet on how we steward and conserve our resources. In these times when we have so many challenges before us, scarcity of water, climate issues, environmental degradation, and we have very little resources to meet those challenges, I think regionalization, compromise, collaboration are all necessary for us to meet these challenges. Wildlife, they, they don't have a say. So it's up to us to take initiative, to take leadership.